in our quest to understand the diverse tapestry of human history, today we embark on a journey into the lesser explored aspects of Tino culture. Join us as we delve into the intriguing world of relationships and connections within this ancient Caribbean civilization. One fascinating aspect that sets the Tino culture apart is their perspective on same-sex relationships. Accounts suggest that Tino men engaged in intimate relationships with each other, but it wasn't what you might expect. It wasn't about desire. It was about demonstrating strength and courage. Homosexual relationships were seen as a challenge, a testament to one's bravery within the tribe. Moreover, the Tino culture had a unique way of creating bonds and maintaining peace between tribes. They practiced the exchange of sexual partners as a means of building relationships and fostering harmony. These exchanges went beyond the conventional concept of relationships and played a pivotal role in the intricate web of Tino society. Interestingly, the Tino people didn't have a specific word for homosexuality in their language. Instead, they used different terms to describe those who engaged in same-sex relations, reflecting the distinct cultural nuances of their society. In this, we'll delve deeper into the complexities of Tino relationships, offering a respectful and comprehensive look at a topic rarely discussed. The historical legacy and cultural continuity of the Tino people in the Caribbean. The Tino people were an ancient indigenous group with a rich historical legacy in the Caribbean. Their culture still resonates today through Tino descendant communities and revivalist groups. In the late 15th century, at the time of European contact, the Tino were the predominant inhabitants of regions that now encompass Cuba, the Dominican Republic, Jamaica, Haiti, Puerto Rico, the Bahamas, and the northern Lesser Antilles. Christopher Columbus's arrival in the Bahama Archipelago on October 12, 1492, marked the first encounter between Europeans and the Lucayan branch of the Tino. The Tino communicated through a dialect of the Arawakan language group and lived in organized agricultural societies. These societies were governed by caciques, or chiefs, and were characterized by fixed settlements and a matrilineal system of kinship and inheritance. The religious beliefs of the Tino people centered on the veneration of Zemus. These Zemus represented a diverse array of spirits, often linked to elements of the natural world, and played a central role in their spiritual practices. Historically, some anthropologists and historians have debated the continuity of the Tino culture. There have been arguments suggesting that the Tino people either ceased to exist centuries ago or gradually merged into broader, more dominant African and Hispanic cultures. However, a significant number of individuals today identify as Tino or claim Tino descent, especially within Puerto Rican, Cuban, and Dominican nationalities. Genetic studies have revealed Tino mitochondrial DNA in these populations, which indicates direct maternal lineage connections to the Tino people. Stories of Tino Women The role of women in Tino society is a captivating and often overlooked aspect of their culture. Tino society was distinct in its matrilineal system, where descent and kinship were traced through the mother. This system granted Tino women extensive control over their lives and the communities they lived in. Women were often organized in village groups, where they lived with their children, while men resided separately. This arrangement allowed Tino women to assume vital roles in their communities, from primary food producers to ritual specialists. They even participated in the Tino political hierarchy, reaching positions as high as kazakas, which gave them the power to make important decisions and assign tasks to tribe members. One fascinating aspect of Tino culture was the economic role of women. Wealthier women in the tribe would collect crafted goods, 
which were used for trade or as gifts. This showcases their significant economic contributions to their communities and exemplifies their agency within the society. However, the arrival of the Spaniards brought a darker side to the story. Tino women were taken as hostages during negotiations with the colonizers, and some were viewed as commodities to be traded. This unfortunate turn of events marked the beginning of a period of Spanish abduction and systemic rape of Tino women. Family, gender, and education. The common Tino family consisted of a man, woman, and two three children. Females and males had different roles, yet equal rights. Women provided the labor for agriculture, while men hunted and fished off coast. The Tino traced their decent maternally, mother's side. A man lived in his maternal village, and any goods, status, or office were inherited through maternal lineage. Women worked in the fields with their babies on their backs. Daughters helped their mothers prepare the manioc. It was during these times when girls would learn the women's songs, stories and traditions of their people. Other jobs women had included working with clay, designing pottery, and making beautiful jewelry. Women were also responsible for picking and weaving cotton into hammocks, baskets, and white skirts worn by married women, called naguas. Men, on the other hand, were responsible for tasks such as building canoes, using fire, falling trees, and making tools from stone. They would also find gold to be used in jewelry from the riverbeds and streams. Fathers and extended male family members taught boys the ways of fishing and hunting. During religious ceremonies, the bohik, a medicine person or shaman, taught the history of the Tinos. Through stories and song, the bohik passed down knowledge of their villages, battles, historical events, and taught religion and tradition. Written language was in the form of carving symbols on rocks, while oral history was passed down through songs, dance, and stories. Children learned how to play instruments from an early age and were actively engaged in these ceremonies. Taino Sexuality The Taino people were very open to people of all sexual orientations. They had no stigma against people of different sexualities or gender identities. Taino people often chose to live together in same-sex households. They were also known to marry a person of any gender, as long as they were of a different tribe. For many centuries, the Taino healers have been known as the original shamans. What differentiates them from other indigenous cultures is that their healers are often women, not men. Witchcraft and shamanism are closely linked, but there are also important differences between the two practices. There have been accounts of Taino men having sexual relationships with other men. It is believed that they did this to prove their strength and courage to the tribe, as homosexual sex was seen as a challenge. Homosexuality was also practiced among the Taino as a way to create a stronger tie between tribes. Tribes would often exchange sexual partners to build a relationship and keep the peace between them. The Taino did not have a word for homosexuality in their language. They used other words to describe those who were sexually active with others of the same sex. There is no written word in Taino that describes queerness. The closest word to describe sexual ambiguity is kakafuego, which translates to spider fire. This was used to describe someone who was sexually omnivorous. They also used jaguar to describe someone who was androgynous or sexually ambiguous. There was no stigma against people who chose to have sex outside of marriage. Sex was seen as a way to heal a person and be one with the earth and nature. In fact, Taino people believed that having sex in certain locations would increase the power of the experience, such as having sex in the water or under a full moon. 
As we come to the end of our exploration into Tino culture and the unique perspectives on relationships, we want to express our gratitude for joining us on this enlightening journey. If you found this video informative and thought-provoking, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with friends who might find it just as intriguing. We're dedicated to bringing you more captivating insights into the lesser-known facets of history, culture, and society. To stay updated and continue learning with us, click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Do you have your own thoughts, questions, or experiences related to this topic or the Tino culture? Feel free to share them in the comments below. We love hearing from our viewers and engaging in meaningful discussions.